10,542 kilometers so far on his 250 marathons that he ran in 2010, Martin Parnell did from Cochrane, Alberta, to raise money for Right to Play. 250 full marathons in 2010. 42.2 kilometers a day, five days a week, for 50 weeks that year. Who knew that the human body was capable of that? That our legs, his legs, could take him that far? That we possess within our biomechanics that much strength and persevering power? I remember when I first finished cycling across Canada, you didn't think I wasn't going to bring that up, <laughs> and got to Halifax, and uh, I thought, I can't stop. I don't want to stop. Uh, your body was just peaking in terms of, for me, because I had all this baby fat to lose over the first 7,000 kilometers, but I could have gone on forever, and it felt so alive. I was convinced that human beings were made to be outside and using their physiology to this extreme. This is how we're made to be and flourish as human beings. But put up that next slide just in case anyone missed it, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> Several weeks ago, I met with Dr. Ben O'Nig, who's the founder of the Human Performance Lab at the University of Calgary, to talk about the human leg in motion. So this guy's really not into the faith thing much, but he's into the science thing a lot, a multidisciplinary expert, I would say. And he agreed to meet, and when I told him about my bike thing, because I couldn't help bringing it up there, he was totally not surprised. He said, he, first thing he said was, at sub-maximal level, right? That's how you did it, right? And I went, that's exactly how I did it. You, you, you don't bonk. You don't push too hard up the hill when you're going through the Rockies. You don't push too hard into the headwind on the prairies. You stay just below, and you can go on forever. He said... At sub-maximal level, he's learned that the human leg can, quote, go for a long, long time. This is part of the interview. How would you describe a leg in motion as being just right? Well, that's an interesting question. Yeah, you know, if you look at the different human beings, the different beings on Earth, how they locomote, the human locomotion is superior in walking, I think. It's not superior in running. It's superior in very long distance running. So this, there's the idea that old hunting was done not by killing the, the animal in a fight, but, but basically by tiring the animal out mm -hmm. because we can sweat, we, we can exchange our energy into the environment and the and, uh, animal can, cannot do that. Mm. An animal doesn't sweat usually. They mm. have the, the tongue mm -hmm. where they sweat, and so in that long distance running, and we talk about you know, hundred kilometers or something like that, mm. the human being seems to be at a very big advantage. In short distance running, the human being is not. Quote, that's where we human beings have an advantage, that steady running at sub-maximal speed, and we can do that for, and then he paused and paused and said, I don't know how long. What we do is without parallel in nature, said Niobe Thompson in the Nature of Things program last month. Humans are simply nature's best distance runners. We are. From the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40. 
Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. This week, I uh, spent two days working my way through Biomechanics and Biology of Movement, a book that Dr. Nig was the lead editor on. Um, he cited about four million times in the content of the book. And as I was reading it, I'm um, trying to get a better understanding of the actual anatomy and biology of the leg because I'm not trained in that. Um, so at least to get a sense of the beauty and complexity of it, I was blown away by all of the systems that are at work in our legs, and I wrote some notes. Running depends on a biochemical process where blood continually delivers the metabolic components of muscle work. To big muscles for big work, to little muscles, which are much more efficient, and Dr. Nig is all over these small, efficient muscles, uh, and, and taking care of them. That's the answer for injury avoidance and comfort. For small muscles for small work, all of them working in a wonderfully interdependent way. Those muscles transform chemical energy into mechanical energy, a brilliant process of that transitioning. Running also requires a trans transformation of oxygen into muscle work, and there's a whole intricate system for that. The leg is also incredibly energy efficient in terms of how it stores, conserves, and releases energy. When you run, energy is stored in your tendons and ligaments at every step. Your legs have springs built into them. And that stored energy is released in precisely the right way at exactly the right time, enabling huge energy efficiencies to come to the runner. Dr. Daniel Lieberman, this wasn't in this book, but uh, I saw a video from Harvard's Skeletal Biology Lab, said that 17% of the mechanical energy of the body hitting the ground gets stored up and released by the arch of your foot alone and another 35% of the energy gets stored up and released by the Achilles heel. Achilles tendon, I guess, although he said heel. Is it the same? Mark, you're taking med school. Yeah, sorta? Okay, I'm good. Your leg muscles, tendons, and ligaments are attached to structural levers, bone, bones and joints, and those bones, along with tendons and ligaments, adapt to applied me mechanical stresses. So here the forces of tension and compression are at work in perfect sync in your bones and tendons as you run. And they move large loads across joints via the presence of cartilage, which allows for an equal distribution of those loads. So every time you go out and pound the pavement on hard asphalt, you don't destroy your body, your legs. And all of those processes are controlled, processes are controlled by a neuromuscular system where, as the one writer in the book said, the sluggish properties of muscles and limbs are turned into, quote, graceful, intricate movements. You move from grass to asphalt and back. Your body changes like that because of the different surface that you're running on. It's a physiological miracle. You maintain balance and control via top-down input from your brain and bottom-up input, input from peripheral receptor systems. Your body adjusts and gets up to speed, and it kind of changes gears, like how a car's changing gears works. And then above all of that, you have your psychological system, which is at play as well. So not only can you run, and that's a miracle, but you think you can run. And I mean, that's only scratching the surface, but when I finished the second day of reading that book, I had to go downstairs onto my treadmill and run for half an hour because I needed to worship God. I believe, Eric Liddell said in Chariots of Fire, you know the quote, God made me for a purpose. He also made me fast, and when I run, I feel His pleasure. 
an obituary for an ultramarathoner named Micah True who died a month or so ago. His friend wrote, when he was out on the trail running, it was like someone just rang the school bell and said, recess. It was utter playfulness. Mitch Ablom, a writer, writes, the running boy, the running girl, is inside every man, every woman, no matter how old he or she gets. In that same book I remember reading years ago, he is describing what it might be like in heaven and dreaming of what it would be. And one very beautiful material, leg-oriented example he gave was that he ran in heaven and he noticed that he felt like a 10-year-old boy again, like the energy and the free. He didn't even think about whether your knees were going to be able to take it or there was just such a freedom in being able to run, run young again. Can you imagine that kind of freedom again, that kind of energy. When you're feeling the flow of a great run and you're in it and it's good, can you imagine that forever? Can you imagine that, that flowing pleasure that you feel if you're a runner out on the path or a cyclist out on the road or a whatever in your thing physically? is something that God, too, delights in, seeing you, His creation, fully being alive in these ways. They will soar on wings like eagles, the prophet said. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Is that not what being a human being is meant to be? Is this not what your life Jack is supposed to be. Our lives are supposed to be like this as people of faith, believing in an everlasting God. And is not, are not the biomechanics of our human legs not meant to be a pointer to the world-ordering wisdom of Christ who, through whom all things were made? Do our legs' everlasting nature point to an everlasting nature were you to look through them and run past them and listen to them. Another clip with Dr. Nig. Um, I studied physics. I changed into biomechanics. Biomechanics was completely new when I started. And I developed biomechanics in Zurich and I had a lab there. And then I was brought over here. And what I changed was that in Zurich I had a biomechanics lab, and here I had a human performance lab. Performance not meaning high performance, meaning what we do. And we have in this group here, we have everything from medical people, engineers, physicists, physiologists, biochemists, psychologists, I, I mean, you name it. And what, what the idea was to look at the movement in, in, a, in a very holistic way. And we, we tried to do that, and we were quite successful. We were the first lab in the world that did that. And then you could get something like that, which is, I think it's a step further than looking from a psychological point of view or looking from a mechanical point of view. People like running. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just... God's gift. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure he liked me finishing. <laughs> finishing his sentence there. We had a good talk afterwards, after the cameras were off, and, and uh, we had a real good talk. And yeah, definitely not on the same page on the God's gift part, but <laughs> yeah, that's a sign of wisdom, though. He didn't, like, cut my head off right after that. He got really animated at that point of the interview. We were talking about um, the whole tech side and, you know, all of the stuff we build around and what's naturally good and right and, and near perfect in terms of human legs and running. And I had said, 
um, you know, the, the theology of our church is that God's into both. God's into the human body that He made and breathed with such capacity, but God also called us to fill the earth with technology and make it flourish and make it full. And so if good shoes come alongside a great ankle joint and allow running to flourish even more, then God is honored through the both of the two of them coming together. So as soon as I said something like that, he jumped into, well, this is what we're doing in our human performance lab, bringing all of these expertises together to get at the greater truth and the greater potential of the human leg, of an athlete's body. To be a Christian, a Bible-reading, card-carrying Christian, is to believe that everything was made through the person of Jesus Christ. All things, psychology, physiology, the medical field, the engineering field, all chemistry, all physics, all theories, all truth, all encompassed, all together, made by a gift given to humanity by God through Christ. So, even as Dr. Nig delights in the greater wisdom that comes from that step further that he referred to, that his multidisciplinary lab enables, so too God delights in the greater understanding that comes when all that he has made comes to bear in revealing the mysterious truth that makes up his creation. When Dr. Nig gets stoked like he does, he's imaging a God who is stoked about the human leg, about your leg and mine and a runner's leg, what all those people in the Vancouver Marathon this morning are doing. God's saying, good, beautiful. To really get these legs of yours, we need to step further of course, I'm meaning step further beyond even what Dr. Nig and his human performance lab is doing in terms of bringing all of those creational goods to bear. Have you not heard? Have you heard this? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He gives strength to the weary. He increases the power of the weak. I can't even run. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Second wind. Whew. Breathe my spirit on you, and you'll be empowered and renewed, lifted up, redirected energized, strengthened, and renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. God, by nature, is everlasting, eternal, always has been, always is, fully is, always will be. God is power. God is your strength. Have you heard, have you come alongside what he knows about you and your legs, your body, your soul? New Hope Church's Zach Robichaud, Zach Robichaud, that's Zach, in Calgary training, is now on, he figured, between kilometer 20 and 22, running the Vancouver Marathon with his sister this morning. Over the past few months, he's been thinking about his faith and his running. This is the first marathon he's ever run, and several big epiphanies came to him. One of them were, was this one. He wrote, one epiphany is that our legs are not being used to their potential. I found in training that first I had to get the rest of my body into shape so that my legs could actually do what they should be doing, running, running long distances. 
My heart, my back, my mind, even my arms didn't really know what to do. So my legs sort of waited for me. Now, Dr. Nig would nod at the physiological truth of that. Your legs are made. We're the ultimate long-distance runners. And then Zock went on to ponder whether on a, a step further level, God has this thing for you, big thing for you, big distances, big power, big strength, whether we are doing all we can to train and get our hearts and our minds and our arms ready for that. Have we even scratched the surface of the things that God is imagining and hoping for and has planned for those who love Him? God made these. He is the creator of the ends of the earth, no matter what end of the earth you're running to. He is strength. He is power. And where and when we fall short, and we all fall short, in a world that falls short, we all hit the wall, we all have limits, although they're apparently a lot further out there for running than we thought. We all die, although He, God, renews your strength. If you're a runner and you've done a marathon for the first time or a long-distance run or a long-distance ride or long-distance whatever, he renews your strength through the voices of co-travelers who are shouting on the sidelines and saying, yeah, you can do it at the 20K mark. People at the, you know we're going to be at the finish line who've gone ahead of you, who are going to cheer you home. I remember Rob Waddell on a huge hill in B.C. cycling, and I couldn't do it. And he slowly, in the grandiest of gears, with all due respect, grandmothers, got me up the hill, talked me up. I could not do it. So too, the Spirit of God, when you can't, you're done. You're hitting the wall. He renews your strength by giving you the capacity to imagine and see the finish line, or the way some high-performance athletes do. Imagine the whole run, the whole trip down that slalom course, that whole route. You just... Whew. And he says there's a greater run that you can imagine and a more eternal journey that you're on that you can step up and include over and above all of that to really breathe life into that run. God really does care... <laughs> Not a hair can fall from your head. Not a step can be taken by your legs apart from the will of our Father in heaven about you and your running ways. And he really cares that it's optimized through putting hope in him. That phrase, he will renew their strength, in the original Hebrew language is more accurately transliterated as change their strength. It's like putting on fresh clothes after a long run in the shower. It's like taking something very old and exchanging it, totally changing it out with something new. In our journey, our story, I mean, this is it, right? You can't ultimately finish the race. You need God to change it out for you and give you a new heart and new legs and a new meniscus and a new joint and a new everlasting, eternal. You're going on forever. You're meant for everlasting body. God wants that for you. Best part of my visit with Dr. Nig, next slide, Tom. <laughs> what he's doing here, you know, I figured I'm there, I got my research done, let's see if I can get some free medical advice for my sore knees. So I asked Dr. Nig, 
I said, uh, okay, my knees, I blew it out biking last summer, and I can't recover. And he says, what kind of pain? And he says, okay, do this, right? He says, every day when you brush your teeth for two minutes, one minute on each leg, and he's doing this in his office, right? And he's bouncing on one knee and says, brush your teeth for a minute on a soft surface, so you're really trying to keep balance, right? It's building up all the little muscles around your ankle, and it's strengthening those areas that need strength. And then for the next minute, do it on the other thing. So <laughs> anyway, he's bouncing and bouncing. And I thought, here's this super brain, right? I mean, his head's bigger than mine. And <laughs> I noticed that about that thing. And now I've, we're going to send this video to Dr. Nigg. So with all due respect, I think that's, they, they say, cranial circumference is tied to intelligence. So. <laughs> but this learned, very wise man and leader, that he cared enough for me to, to actually make me do it in his office with him until I was doing it right so that my knees would feel better. He cared. He doesn't know me from Adam, but he cared. And I left there and I felt like I'd bumped into a little bit of the heart of God through him for me. And my knees are better. Okay, a minute on each. As you're brushing your teeth, that's the brilliant part because we're always brushing our teeth twice a day. So try bouncing. Do you see what this means? All these pioneers who blazed the way, all these veterans cheering us on. It means we'd better get on with it. You better get on with it. Strip down, start running, and never quit because your God's an everlasting God. No extra spiritual fat, no parasitic sins, the writer of Hebrews says. Keep your eyes on Jesus who both began and finished the race we're in. Study how he did it because he never lost sight of where he was headed, that exhilarating finish in and with God. He could put up with anything along the way, cross, shame, whatever. And now he's there in the place of honor, on the podium, right alongside God. When you find yourselves flagging in your faith, go over that story again, item by item, that long litany of hostility he plowed through, and that will shoot adrenaline into your souls. Let's pray. I'm sure we've all felt it, God, um, those moments where physically we did something more than we thought we could do. I'd never been an athlete. I, I could do that. You know, hike that far, climb that face in that way, run that distance, play basketball at that level, skate that fast, and had an epiphany and realized, whoa, there's more to this body than meets the eye. So too, we pray that you would open our eyes to the even greater stepping up knowledge of who we are, physiologically, spiritually, psychologically, in all of our beings before you. As we had a moment where we were able to see ourselves anew, help us really see ourselves anew by seeing you looking at us and esteeming us and strengthening and empowering us, calling us. You can do it. You can finish this. I'm with you. I won't leave you. I am strength. I am power. I am everlasting. Call us home, Lord Jesus, in this way. Come alongside us by your Spirit in this way. Father, through the creational miracle that you've built into our legs, speak and propel us home. We pray. 
Amen.